So welcome back to the channel, I'm Sunny. So this morning I woke up to a whole bunch of articles stating that IBM were very close to acquiring HashiCorp, which is very big news and I'll be interested to see how this pans out, but let's get straight into the articles. Okay, so the article reads, IBM nearing deal for cloud software provider HashiCorp, source says. So this is dated on the 24th of the 4th, 2024. IBM is nearing a cloud deal to buy cloud software provider HashiCorp, according to a person familiar with the matter. HashiCorp stock surged 24%, giving it a market value of $6.1 billion after the Wall Street Journal first reported the talk. Under CEO Arvind Krishna, IBM has focused on acquisitions to build out its cloud offerings. The boom in generative artificial intelligence has increased the attractiveness of cloud software as it provides vast amounts of data. California-based HashiCorp allows customers to establish and manage the infrastructures on the cloud. The company's annual revenue jumped 22.5% to $583.1 million for the year ended January 31 beating analysts' average estimate at the time. A deal for HashiCorp could be finalized in the coming days, but it's still possible that the talks may not result in a transaction, according to the WSJ report. HashiCorp declined to comment when contacted by Reuters. IBM completed nine acquisitions in 2023, including a deal for technology spend management platform, Aptio, from Vista Equity Partners for $4.6 billion. The company's 2018 acquisition of software company Red Hat for $34 billion, including debt, remains its biggest buyout till date. Okay, so HashiCorp have actually been in the news for the past year or so, and I think everything was actually pointing to them building up their revenue and probably selling out. So let's go look at what these little flags were that were showing, I guess, the lead up to this moment. So firstly, the big announcement was HashiCorp adopts business source license for all products. So they basically went from the Mozilla public license 2.0 to the business source license version 1.1. But what this meant was that rather than being an open source product, they put in a little clause and a licensing model around Terraform, which a lot of people were using it from an open source point of view. This didn't really affect, I think, the consumers as much. It affected the competition, the people that built software, technology, and other things on top of Terraform to make Terraform better. So that's what caused a lot of uh, ripples in the community. And then OpenTofu came. And I think OpenTofu was forked off Terraform 157 potentially. So obviously now there is a community, which oddly enough, um, is also managed by the Linux Foundation. Another thing that stemmed out from this was another product called OpenBow. And OpenBow, again, funded by the Linux Foundation, and it's basically a fork of HashiCorp Vault. So there's a whole bunch of community type products that were basically pinned to a point in time of uh, their official HashiCorp releases, and then now they're community managed, I guess. And it'll be interesting to see how these two products uh, evolve over time. And let's now flick over to the next things. After this announcement, so this is October 11th, 2023, they made a whole bunch of announcements on new features. So it was like they built up all these features, but they decided to not release them um, until after the BSL announcement and then HashiConf. So you can see they basically released a Terraform test framework, uh, test integrated module publishing, generated module tests, uh, enhanced uh, editor validation in Visual Studio Code, and this little black box thing called Stacks, um, which uh, seems to be a better way to manage modules, I think, um, and then in ephemeral uh, workspaces. So they, they've made a whole bunch of announcements now. They have now released, I think, Terraform 1.8, so there's been a lot of features and they've just announced uh, 1.8. So and then if we look back at uh, Mitchell Hashimoto, one of the founders, uh, it says after more than 11 years, HashiCorp co-founder Mitchell Hashimoto pens a heartfelt goodbye letter to the company. So now one of the founders have left 
And then if we follow it a bit further, the next thing that happened was their licensing model changed. So um, this is mainly around Terraform Cloud because it appears that Enterprise is a bit more of a black box. Um, it's a self-hosted Terraform Cloud, I guess, but the pricing model is a bit, you know, it's, it's basically, I think, how well you can negotiate a contract. But I've heard on the grapevine that um, it's gotten very expensive where people are potentially considering moving away from Terraform because it's just too expensive. Terraform Enterprise, that is. And Cloud, I think, um, I haven't really used it, but it's the same as Enterprise pretty much, to my understanding. Obviously, diff slightly different feature sets and licensing models, um, but functionality-wise, I think it's quite similar. But I've heard Terraform Enterprise is getting quite expensive, so people are looking at moving away. So the next article then, dated March 16th, 2024, so that was only last month, that cloud software company HashiCorp exploring potential sale. So it says here that uh, they're explore, exploring options, including a sale. Shares of the San Francisco, California-based company rose more than 12% in extended trading. HashiCorp has been working with a financial advisor in recent months and has held uh, exploratory talks with other industry players, aka IBM. I think there was other talks about maybe Broadcom because Broadcom apparently have a lot of money. And it basically says here that the company has a market capitalization of 5.28 billion as of the last close. HashiCorp did not immediately respond to Reuters uh, request for comment. So obviously they don't want to let anything out of the bag while they're in contract negotiations. And then the next thing that was a bit odd was another trusted source, Yahoo Finance. March 27th, 2024, HashiCorp Inc. CMO Mark Holmes sells 14,767 shares. So Mark Holmes, the chief marketing officer of HashiCorp, has sold 14,767 shares of the company on March 22nd, 2024, according to a recent SEC filing. The transaction was executed at an average price of $27.09 per share, resulting in a total value of $473.03. HashiCorp Inc. is a software company that provides cloud infrastructure automation solutions. The company suite of tools assists in provisioning, securing, connecting, and running any infrastructure for any application. Over the past year, Mark Holmes has sold a total of 259,214 shares of HashiCorp Inc. and has not made any purchases of the stock. The insider's recent sale on March 22nd is part of a series of sales conducted by the insider of the past year. The insider transaction history for HashiCorp Inc. shows a pattern of insider selling with 68 insider selling recorded over the past year and only one insider buying during the same period. The insider trend image above reflects the recent activities of insiders at HashiCorp Inc. providing a visual representation of the buying and selling trends. Yes, yeah, so insider sells are all the red. And in other headlines, there's been a little bit of a tussle between OpenTofu and HashiCorp. So basically HashiCorp released a cease and desist letter and sent it to OpenTofu saying that they have breached the BSL code. So on the OpenTofu website, they released an open letter and it states, on April 3rd, we received a cease and desist letter from HashiCorp regarding our implementation of the remove block in OpenTofu, claiming copyright infringement on the part of one of our core developers. We were also made aware of an article posted that same day with the same accusations. We have investigated these claims and are publishing the cease and desist letter, our response and the source code origin documented resulting from our investigation. The OpenTofu team vehemently disagrees with any suggestion that is misappropriated missourced or otherwise misused HashiCorp's BSL code. All other statements have zero basis in facts. HashiCorp has made claims of copyright infringement in a cease and desist letter. These claims are completely unsubstantiated. And then it says the code in question can clearly be shown to have been copied from older code under the MPL 2.0 license. HashiCorp seems to have copied the same code itself and they implemented their version of this feature. All of this is easily visible in our detailed SCO analysis as well as our own comments which indicate this. So they've got their letters here. There's basically the source code origin document which is what they talk about. I'll put this link below if you want to have a read. It turns out 
that HashiCorp have stood down and they have deemed that open tofu were not in the wrong. So you can go through all the artifacts and it talks about it. So this will be a very interesting story. I mean, based on what I've read, it sounds like within the next week, there could be an, a big announcement, right? So stay tuned. I'm gonna start making content at some point. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you later. See ya.